Hello and welcome back everyone. In this session, we will see how we can simulate a situation where we know in advance about the displacement of the structure. Because of this displacement, we want to calculate the stresses induced and the reaction forces. To understand the concept of enforced displacement, we are going to take a simple example of cantilever beam. For this session, we will have to import beam.stp file. Once you import the file, you will have to follow the as usual procedure go into the design modeler and check the geometry thoroughly. Since we have already discussed so many times about how to check the geometry or the CAD, in this session we are not going to do that. Simply double click on the model to go into the mechanical window. Once the mechanical window get open, make sure that you are in the right unit system. Once the unit system has been confirmed, let us first mesh the CAD. Right click and say generate mesh. As you can see, by default ANSYS has put only one layer of element along the thickness. In any organization or for that matter in order to get the accurate result, it is never ever recommended to have only one layer of element along the thickness. So here let us try to have at least three layers of element. Simply click on the mesh, go for sizing, instead of advanced size function, set it to no. Just scroll it downward, here switch on the proximity. Set it to yes. From here you can set number of cell across the gap. As of now by default it has been set it to 3. If you want you can set it to 5 as well. Just right click and again say generate mesh. With the proximity function on you can easily set number of layer across the thickness. Now here is our problem description. We will have to fix one end of the beam and on the other end we will have to apply the displacement of let's say 5 mm. So let us try to fix one end of the beam. Simply go for environment, click on the fix support, simply select that particular face and that's it. Again in order to apply the displacement, under the load you can apply force, moment, pressure, line pressure, hydrostatic pressure and n number of things. But in order to apply the enforced displacement itself, we will have to take the help of displacement only. So simply click on the displacement. Click on the face onto which you want to apply the displacement. Set it to apply and let's say we know for sure that this particular beam can have the maximum displacement of 5 mm. Keep in mind here I am focusing on the word maximum displacement of 5 mm only. So in the Y component here I will simply put minus 5 mm. Then for the result simply click on the solution. Let's say I want to calculate the deformation. Now in advance we know that deformation is going to be 5 mm only. But still, let us import that one. Go for the stresses and let's say I want to calculate the equivalent 1 mic stress. Now in addition to the stresses, we are also interested in the reaction force. Since we are displacing this end of the beam by 5 mm, it has to create some reaction force at the other end. So in order to get the reaction force, simply click on the probe and here simply click on the force reaction. Again he will ask you at which location you want to calculate the reaction force. Of course at the fix support we are going to calculate it. Simply click on the fix support, right click and set it to solve. Once the model have been solved, simply click on total deformation. So as you can see the total deformation is 5 mm only. Currently the precision of the legend have been set it to 4. But generally we don't want that much of precision. So right click on the legend and simply go for digit. From the digit set it to precision to be 2. So after the point we will get 2 digits only. So currently the maximum displacement we are getting is 5 mm. Click on the equivalent stresses to get the stresses. In similar way in order to check the reaction force that has been generated because of the 5 mm displacement simply click on the force reaction. In the details view you can check in the x axis the reaction force is 1 e raised to minus 2. In the y axis it is 946 newton. And in the z axis it is 1 e raised to minus 3. So we can fairly say most of the reaction force is coming in the y direction only which is around 946 newton. Now let us try to see how the animation is looking. Simply click on total deformation and play the animation. It is always better practice to observe the animation properly. Simply set it to any z view and see how the animation is happening. Once we are satisfied with the animation and once we observe the overall behavior of the structure, we are good to go. At this moment of time you might ask, okay, let us try to reverse engineer the same problem. 
Let us apply the force of 946 Newton at the end and let's see whether we are getting the 5mm as a displacement or not. So that is very very good way of correlating the results. So let us try to do that. Simply click on static structural and set it to duplicate. Again expand the static structural. Fix support. Yes, I do want to fix this particular support. But displacement? No, I don't want to apply the displacement. Simply set it to suppress. Right click over here, set it to insert and let's say I want to apply the force. Simply click on this space, set it to apply. Instead of vector, I will go for component. In the Y component, I will simply type minus 946. Once the force is applied, simply solve the model. Now let us see the total deformation. As you can see, the total deformation is 5mm. Not only that, even if you check the equivalence traces, it has to be same as that of the previous one. So in this way basically, you can also apply the enforced displacement to the structure. And believe me, there are going to be lot of situation where instead of force, pressure, moment, torque, we generally apply the displacement as a boundary condition. Because in those situation, we know for sure, if the structure has the deformation of the particular magnitude, then it will be the worst case situation for that component. For example, here you can might assume. Currently, we are deforming the end of this beam by the 5mm. In the beginning of the problem itself, I said that the maximum displacement that this component can have is the 5mm. So there might be the case where there is another component which is at the distance of 5mm from this top component. And when this free end deformed by the 5mm, it will come in contact with that particular component. And after that, there will be no further deformation or the displacement of this free end. And since there is no displacement and this component is already in contact with the other component, this component can simply transfer the forces to the other component. So I can technically say for this component, the worst case situation would be the 5mm displacement. And hence we have applied the 5mm as the displacement. Hope I have not confused you and at the end of this session you have little bit idea about the enforced displacement. We will meet in the next session till then take care goodbye.